You create a Google Ads tag in your Google Tag Manager container and then see this notification. What is Conversion Linker and what should you do about it? Let me explain. When a visitor clicks a Google ad and then lands on your website, the URL may contain various parameters and one of them is Google Click ID, also known as GCL ID. In reality, the value of this parameter will be much longer, but this is just an example. So if a visitor lands on a page and URL contains this parameter and you fire a conversion linker tag on all pages of the website, then conversion linker will create a first party cookie that contains the value of Google Click ID. Let's see how that works. So in Google Tag Manager, I will click New, Tag Configuration, then Google Ads, Conversion Linker, and for now, let's keep all these settings as they are and just in triggering, select all pages. Then let's name this tag and click Save. Now we will test if this is working, so click Preview. Then you will be asked to enter the URL of the website where you want to test this, so I will just copy the URL with Google Click ID. I enter it right here and I click connect. Now, if I open developer tools and then go to application, cookies, and then select my domain, here you will see two cookies and this one is the one that contains the click ID. So I entered this number right here and you can see it right here. Now, if I close this and then try another parameter, I mean another value, so I will just enter ABC123 and then we'll connect again, the conversion linker tag will fire again. And if I check the value of the cookie, you will see that now it stores ABC123. So basically this cookie will contain the information about the last ad click. Then later down the road, if the visitor converts and that conversion is tracked by Google Analytics, the value of this cookie will also be sent together with that conversion. If you're wondering if you actually need to install Conversion Linker on your site, I have information on my blog and I will post a link to it below the video, but to simplify things, here are just very simple questions. Are you using Google Tag Manager? If yes, then are you tracking Google Ads conversions with Google Tag Manager? If you answered yes to both questions, then think no more and create the conversion linker tag in your container. Visually, the entire process looks like this. A visitor clicks a Google ad, then lands on your website and Google Click ID is in the URL. If it's not, then conversion linker will not be able to create a cookie. So here the cookie is created, then the visitor converts, maybe signs up for something or makes a purchase, then conversion is tracked and that conversion event together with cookies data is sent to Google Ads. Now let's take a look at some additional settings in the conversion linker. The first one is enable linking on all page URLs. This is related to situations where let's say the visitor comes to your website from Google Ad, the URL contains GCL ID, but the visitor still hasn't given consent. Then the visitor goes to the next page and gives consent there. Normally, Google Click ID will be lost on that second page, but if you want to persist that across different pages of the same subdomain, then you can enable this option right here. But keep in mind that in order for this to work, you also have to implement Google Consent Mode. Then the other option is related to cross-domain tracking. If the journey of your website visitors spans across multiple domains, and I'm not talking about subdomains, different domains mean, for example, website1.com and website2.com. So they are totally different domains. If you have, let's say, blog.website.com and www.website.com, which are two subdomains of the same domain, then you don't need cross-domain tracking. Cross-domain tracking means two completely different domains because cookies cannot be shared between different domains. But thanks to this feature right here, you can actually mitigate that issue. Let's remember that previous example of two domains, website one and website two. So if your visitor journey spans across multiple domains and the visitor can go from website one to website two or vice versa from website two to website one, then just enter both domains, comma separated, in this field right here. If the journey spans across more domains, then enter them right here. What this will do is that when the visitor is on website one and clicks the link that 
redirects the visitor to website two, Conversion Linker will decorate the link right here with Google Click information, and it will be available right here as well. Then on website two, when Conversion Linker fires, it will take that information and create a cookie on this domain as well. Let's take a look at how this works. Also make sure that accept incoming linker parameters checkbox is enabled. Here I have a demo page on gtmplayground.com. If I click this link, it will open a tab with another website, which has a completely different domain. Let's say that both of these pages are part of the same user journey. So I want to use cross domain tracking. That's why I will go to Google Tag Manager, then go to conversion linker. And instead of these two fake domains, I will enter gtm playground.com and then gtm course my shopify.com like that and then click save then i will hit preview to refresh the preview mode and on this first page i will click the link and once i am moved to the second page this is the information that was added by conversion linker tag on this first page because if i inspect it you will see that the url is decorated in the preview mode, I see that on container loaded, my conversion linker fired. So this is happening on the second website. And if I go to the developer tools of the second website and I look for the AW cookie or any cookie that starts with GCL, then you will see that its value contains ABC123, which is the same as right here. So now the cookie value is the same across both websites. And if the conversion happens on the second site, Google Ads will be able to track that and attribute that properly. So this part right here is responsible for decorating the URL, which means that we have this. And this checkbox is responsible for reading this parameter on the second domain and then creating cookie from it. On most websites, adding the parameter with a question mark, which means that this is a URL parameter, will work just fine. However, in very rare cases on very few websites, this is not accepted because it might break the functionality of the website. In that case, you can tell conversion linker to use not query parameters, but fragment instead. This means that instead of this question mark, the parameter will be added like this. But again, I want to emphasize that in most cases, the question mark will work just fine. Then if the website visitor moves from one domain to another domain with the form submission, for example, the form is submitted and then the visitor is redirected to a completely different domain, then you can try to use decorate forms. However, keep in mind that there are various ways how forms can be tracked and not all forms will be supported by this feature. And then there is one more section which is advanced and that is rightfully so because in 99% of situations you will not need this section. Basically here you can manage cookie settings. For example, conversion linker, when it creates a cookie or actually two cookies, they start with GCL. But if for some reason you want to use a different prefix, for example, GCL2 or something else, then you can add that new prefix right here. Then by default, when the cookie is created, it is set on all subdomains of the website. It will be dot, then your domain, and then dot com or something else. But if, again, for some reason, you want to limit the domain of the cookie, for example, you just want to set it on one subdomain only, then you would need to enter that domain or that subdomain right here, for example, like that. In this case, the cookie will be accessible only on this subdomain. Then by default, the cookie is set on all pages of the subdomain, for example, demo page slash homepage slash contact, whatever. So anything will be covered by this. But if for some reason you want to limit that to just particular page paths, for example, just to the English version of the site, you can enter it like that. And then if needed, you can also insert some cookie flags, an example, is visible right here, same site, none or secure. But as I've said, this is definitely advanced. And in most situations, you will not need this section. So don't overwhelm yourself too much with this. And then the final tip is related to server side tagging. So if you have Google tag in the client side, Google tag manager container, and that Google tag is sending data to your server side endpoint, which means that, of course, all other tags in your container are also using this server container URL, then all GE4 requests will be sent to your server-side Google Tag Manager. Then in server-side container, it will be enough for you to have the Google Analytics 
GA4 client and then go to tags, click new, tag configuration, conversion linker. And then if you're working with multiple domains, then enable this option right here. And then here, there are also some things related to advanced cookie settings. But again, in many cases, you might not need that because the default options are more than enough. And then here in the triggering set to fire on all pages. Of course, in your server side container, you would also need to have the Google ads tags, but this video focuses on conversion linker. That's why I'm showing just this part. So what will happen here is that when Google Analytics page view request is sent to your server, then this tag will fire. And if the request contains the GCL ID parameter, then thanks to this tag, the server will set the first party cookie in the visitor's browser. And one final thing is that if you are using server-side tagging and your website container has Google Analytics tracking code, while your server-side container has the conversion linker, you don't need conversion linker in the client-side container, which means the website container. So if you are not using server-side tagging, but you're running Google Ads and you're using website Google Tag Manager, then have conversion linker in your website container. But if you are using server-side tagging and your Google ads are being tracked in the server container, then have conversion linker here and you don't need conversion linker in the website container. Hopefully this video cleared the doubts about the conversion linker. Basically, if you are using Google Tag Manager and you have Google ads tags inside of it, then create the conversion linker tag too. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.